What's going on, YouTubers? Welcome to another video. So, I've been playing Elden Ring DLC, and Jupiter's freaking cock, they made that game too difficult. Now, I beat the entire main game, every s boss you could think of. Beat them all. I've played pretty much every Souls game. Beat them all. But this DLC, too freaking difficult. I will say. Because in Elden Ring, when you level up and you, like, you know, update, upgrade a stat, it barely makes a difference like absolutely barely you know i could upgrade to 99 on health have my like defense maxed out and the strongest armor in the game and a boss will still kill me in one to two hits and it drives me freaking crazy i spent three hours on this one boss only got about 60 percent complete because you fight three bosses in a row and each time he gets more aggressive oh my gosh it drives me crazy Jupiter's cock. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of reviewers are complaining about the difficulty on that DLC. Just be like, dude, re was your number one goal just to create a boss that's impossible to beat? Seriously. Anywho, I can't turn on my lights right now because Xfinity decided to have an outage almost all day. So I've been without internet all day. Which is fine because I've just been playing Elden Ring. But it is driving me crazy at this point. Cause I don't know if I need to beat this boss to progress. But I've given up, dude. Three hours. <laughs> I've never spent that long on any boss, and I've beaten Sekiro, which is probably one of the hardest, Bloodborne. You know, this is just ridiculous. So, uh, let's go ahead and do another re-review for you guys. Let me think, which one did I do last? Uh, I believe it was Lycan Bus, so we're back in this room. Uh, let's do a top shelf piece, just because the bottom shelf, we don't have good lighting. So... Uh, let's just talk about Wonder Woman on horse. This is one of my older DCs. Uh, you know, for a long time, she was my number one favorite piece. But, you know, over the years, statues have gotten better and better. You know, but let's talk about her. Uh, so, I mean, the biggest and most impressive thing on this piece is simply the presence. You know, when you look at a standard statue, it's just like a body and a base. Where this one, you have a ginormous base, like freakishly big. It's... You know, absolutely massive, almost rotunda T-Rex or Prime 1 Predator big. So it's a huge base and it's very detailed. You know, then of course you have a gigantic horse that's like a 75 pound dog almost. Think of it like that big. And then of course you have a gorgeous Gal Gadot Wonder Woman from the original movie. Great pose. You know, very, very good pose. I like it a lot. When we come to the base, you got a classic... You know, really just silver, gray underbase with a Wonder Woman logo. You got some, like, sacks with probably wheat, some soldier helmets, a uh, wheel for, like, a wheelbarrow, some fences. Now, this one, freaking, this thing never, like, went in good for mine. You know, it's like, this it sucks, honestly. You can, like, literally see the peg right there. Doesn't matter what I do, that thing never fully goes in, you know, but it doesn't fall out, but it never truly goes in. And realistically, it should be going completely flush, but it never does, you know. But overall, I do like the base quite a bit. I think it looks really good, you know. I, I think this is like supposed to be like oil stains, possibly from the wheelbarrow or something, but it has sort of like those oil stains kind of throughout. Really nice water or like mud splash effect and just looks kind of grimy. Definitely, you know, reminds you of like that World War One-ish look from the movie. If that was World War One, which I believe it was. You know, the horse looks great. You know, real fur right here and on the tail. Everything else is like a nice sculpted fur, but it looks good. You know, the eyes look good, nice and glossy. The mouth, you know, like kind of sort of like leather here. That's sculpted. You know, our foot goes in here, leather, the shield. And overall, it looks really good. Uh, I don't got any complaints in regards to, like, the base or the horse. I think all that looks really good. Now, this Wonder Woman is more of, like, the original Prime 1 detail. Because nowadays, Prime 1's upgraded themselves to more of that Blitzway level of detail when it comes to their one-thirds. And there's definitely more hyper-realism, closer to that, like, J&D-esque look without that silicone and hand-punched hair, you know. So this is more of the original Prime 1 look, which is still fantastic, you know. It's still a level above, you know, pretty much anyone fourth out there, 
like older one fourth. You know, but she does have a nice skin texture, you know, translucent resin. The armor looks really good. You know, I wouldn't say it's like 100% accurate and it could use a little bit more texture work, but it overall looks really good. Now, the portrait, it does have Gal Gadot likeness. However, it's the paint app is the problem. You know, I've seen a repaint of this and it made it look much better. Now, I think someday I may consider that if I could find someone in the US that could paint it perfectly, I'd simply just repaint all the skin tone and maybe even the armor like this to just be a little bit more accurate. You know, I think it's uh, just slightly, like if you compare it to that, so you can see it's just a, you know, slightly off. I do like the blue, although the j and is like more vibrant blue, which I kind of prefer. Although that is Justice League. This is Wonder Woman. So they're a little different. The God Killer is real metal. I really like the sculpted hair. It's flowing and it looks great. You know, she has a little bit of teeth. I think the eyes could definitely be painted better. They almost look like decals. They may be. They're not horrible, but they could definitely be better. You know, but a repaint definitely brings out the sculpt. The sculpt is there. You know, it is a big one third, you know, similar to this scale. You know, so I mean, overall concept is extremely good. Now it's a very tall piece, 55 inches. You need a lot of space. You know, it's kind of a, a one-off piece because there's not truly anything that goes with it per se. You know, I would say the closest thing that really goes with it is the other Prime One Wonder Woman training outfit. You know, I think that looks uh, pretty good next to it since they're both from the original Wonder Woman movie. You know, the bus does look good next to it as well. You know, of course, I prefer to have my bus, like the statue in the bust eye level, like their eyes are level, where this obviously Wonder Woman's eyes way up here. But I do prefer them level like that. You can see they're level. I think that's always like the best look. So ideally, she doesn't go great next to a bust. You know, I think the Wonder Woman Ultimate or J&D goes better next to a bust versus the horse. The horse is more of a one-off. You know, but it still is a fantastic piece. Uh, you know, overall, I'd probably give it a 9 out of 10. Uh, dock at one point simply due to the paint out could be better. A little bit better texture work. I still absolutely love this piece. It's definitely a statement piece. It draws your eyes. It's definitely fantastic. I really love it. I don't regret buying it at all. I just wish I didn't display it here. I wish I could have it on like a pedestal. Sort of like how Ronnie Stark does it, you know. In a perfect world, I'd probably be doing J&Ds and Infinity Busts throughout the whole collection. Like the J&D Superman, J&D Wonder Woman. Eventually, if they make a Batfleck, J&D Batfleck, and so forth. You know, because I think J&D next to Infinity is the ultimate look. But Prime 1 is the second best look. You know, because I definitely like the Prime 1 look. You know, statue next to Bust. You know, but nothing beats that J&D. Just because they're matching silicone. But yeah, overall, I still love this piece. I do recommend it. Now, in terms of price, now I paid way too much money for this. I'll be honest. Now she retailed at like, what was it? $3,000 or she was like 3,600 or no, maybe she was 3,600 plus shipping. I think she was like 4,200 with shipping from Prime One when she originally released. I can't remember the edition size, but I think it's a few hundred. I paid close to 6,000 for her. And that is pop culture's fault. They, first off, they gave me a quote and it ended up being like 4,500. So I was like, sure, let's do it. Then they come back after I've paid and say, hey, you owe us another thousand dollars. We wrote the numbers wrong on the shipping. So they charged me another thousand and I really wanted it at that time. I should have just canceled, but I really wanted it. So I paid them another thousand and then they didn't mark on customs the value and I got hit with a $500 customs fee. So I ended up bringing my total to like six grand. Ugh, so annoying. You know, but it is what it is. I do not recommend her for 6,000. Uh, to me, she is really like a 3,000 to $3,500 piece. I wouldn't pay more than like four grand for her. She is kind of rare. I don't see her going up for sale often. Three massive boxes. Like the box for the horse is stupid big. Like Jupiter's cock big. So yeah, that is ridiculous, but I still do recommend her. Although if you don't, if you just want to focus on like Wonder Woman, J and D Wonder Woman is the best Wonder Woman hands down and the Infinity Studios bust. 
those are the two definite Wonder Womans, you know, for sure. Then after that, then I'd say Queen Studios, Bust, and the Wonder Woman on Horse. And then, you know, there's a pretty good custom that just went up for P.O. actually. Now, I don't plan to buy it, but it has like real hair, polystone. I do like it. So yeah, that looks good. But yeah, anyways, folks, uh, so lots of good stuff coming this week. So stay tuned. Make sure you've subbed to the channel, like the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Like, comment, subscribe. Have a great day.